We're in the IBM Storewise V3700. Let's take a look, do an overview. Uh, the default username is going to be Super User. So let's go ahead and log in as Super User. And let's take a look at some of the different menu items. So at the top, we have the overview, which is what you go into as soon as you log into it. And you can see that there's a progression of various different tasks you need to do as you go through the installation process. So for instance, if you click on MDisk, you can actually watch a video on how to set up an MDisk. There's also a pool, you can watch that, volumes, etc. If we go down to the next, we go down to system monitoring. And we can see the IP address of the device. It doesn't really show much more other than that. Go into the details we can see uh, a picture of the device, we can look at the power, look at the temperature, we can expand canister one is online, shows if there's any kind of issues, canister two also online, and if we go to events you can see that there is an Ethernet port failure on one of the uh, Ethernets, which we can then troubleshoot. We can go to performance, and we can see what's happening with uh, the different interfaces, volumes, things like that. Since this is a brand new one, we haven't actually started to use it yet, so you're not going to see a lot of information about uh, usage. All right, let's go to pools, volumes by pool. We can see here that there is a pool that's been created, but there's been no volumes that have been created inside that pool. So if we wanted to, we could create a new volume and we could choose generic thin provision, which is sort of a dynamic memory uh, that's used in remote desktop and Windows as a comparison. Uh, mirror, so it, you only get half the amount of data if you choose to get a mirror, but it, you do get that redundancy. And then thin mirror, same kind of thing as the thin provision. All right, let's go to internal storage. And we can see that we have 12 two terabyte hard drives installed and that one of them is being used as a spare. And we can see that they are uh, the types of drives that they are, that they're SAS drives, 7200 RPM. Let's go to M disks. All right, so MDisk shows that we have a 16.27 terabyte capacity, but we haven't actually used it yet. So if we want, we can click on Actions, we can rename, we can delete, uh, we can do various different things uh, for the pools that we have here. So we have one MDisk inside this one pool. And uh, that's, this is all actually we're going to create because we're going to divide everything up by, by partition. So in our case, it makes sense to just make one pool, one M disk, and then carve up the partitions any way that we want after creating the volumes. All right, so here we have volumes. And again, we have not created a volume yet, but we can certainly do that by clicking on new volume, which we'll do in a separate video. So take a look at the playlist if you want to see that information. And then we see some somewhat uh, redundant information, volumes by pool. This is similar to what we saw earlier when we were uh, in pools themselves because you have volumes by pool here and uh, then you have um, volumes by pool under volumes. I mean, so it just, it just goes, uh, there's a little bit of redundancy as well. So let's go to hosts. And what we're gonna do is create a new host and you can create an iSCSI host or a SAS host. So if you use a SAS host, you have to have a SAS controller card. If you use an iSCSI host, you have to just have an Ethernet connection. And we can call this whatever it is that we want. Uh, and then where it says ports to add to list, this is not an IP address that you want to add. This is the iSCSI port that's uh, listed in your iSCSI initiator. So in your iSCSI initiator, you're going to see a number, and that number is what you paste into where it says iSCSI ports. 
the documentation is incorrect from IBM where they say to add the IP address itself. So if we go over to the configuration tab, this is the initiator name. We copy this and then we paste that into the iSCSI ports and then that's how we add a port. All right, so we have ports by host, which we have not done yet, but we can create a new one and it's the exact same information again. So again, there's a lot of redundancy here. We have host mappings. This is after uh, you create the host, then you can map the partition to that, which we're gonna do in a later video. And volumes by host, same kind of thing. We can map those there. Uh, under access, we have users. This gives you a list of the users and you can easily create new users or change the password under users. And under settings, you can go in and you can change things such as the network information. So this is a real important part here. So you've got management IP addresses, service IP addresses, and iSCSI. So management, this is the IP address. This is what we're in right now. We are in the management itself. So if you click on one, you see one uh, highlights on both the first controller and the second controller. If we click on two, it highlights on the second controller of each. So we can uh, don't have one set for that second controller yet. The service IP address, this is something that you use if you uh, cannot get to the management and you need to repair something, recover something, that kind of thing. So uh, the service IP address is uh, going to be the same IP address by default as the management IP address, but you'll end up getting there when the management is for some reason unavailable. The, uh, oh, and by default, that's going to be port one, by the way. The iSCSI port, this is where you set the IP addresses for the left and right canisters. And you'll definitely want to set that uh, for both of those. And if you want, you can set up alias or change the names of the canisters as well. So this is an overview. We're going to go into uh, separate videos where we create uh, different volumes and, and partitions and things like that. So uh, take a look at the other videos that are in the playlist and you'll get a lot more information.